Where no pony has gone before. By R.K. Stryker, CK5, Chapter 16. Rain uh, Daya and Rainbow Dash stood outside the Castle of Friendship. Both their heads tilted up and eyes scanning the sky. A black suitcase flew next to Twilight. But beyond that, there was nothing or no one about. Is he here yet? Rainbow asked. Grunts gave Twilight. No, Commander Silo isn't here yet. Ask me that again, and you're flying up there yourself! As he held up a hoof in front of Rainbow Dash's muzzle. And I mean it! Rainbow Dash's wings bristled, but she remained silent. Movement from the castle caught their attention. They both turned as Cadence emerged from the front door. She trotted over to the pair, smiling. Hi, you two. Think there's enough room on the shuttle for one more? Tight matter halfway, wrapping her forelegs around her against his neck in a hug. Of course. Rainbow Dash walked over. Hey, the more the merrier. The Enterprise can only get cooler with us to get bored. She closed the door. With that shining armor. Cadence broke the hug and looked at Dash. Oh, he stayed behind. Something else came up he wanted to attend. Rainbow Dash's mouth dropped in shock. What the feathering hay would he want to attend more than going to tour a uh, starship in orbit? Okay, Shiny, vote for initiative! Sure thing, Spike. And thanks for inviting me to your game. You too, Big Mac. Yup. You know, that does raise a question. Why is it that during the Dozens of Dragons episode of uh, the show, didn't Twilight see them playing ogres and opulettes and say, Hey, let me in on this too! I think that joke would have been a lot more funnier and a far better way to end it if Twilight wanted to join in and Spike got this utter fear of Twilight being a killer DM rather than the freeze frame. I don't know, I guess I just kind of wanted to show that Twilight plays the Ogres and Obulets too, because we all know girls play this game too. Oh, you know stallions, Gaines finally said. I said quite mean Rainbow Dasses. Twilight said so towards the sky. She hopped in the air, wings flaring. It's coming, she said, grinning. A small dot in the sky appeared, rapidly growing into a boxy gray hull shuttle, with two nacelles attached to the pot. It slowed down as it approached, stopping a few meters above ground. It dropped down, landing without disrupting a single blade of grass below its hull. The scythe slid its open, and Commander Sulu emerged. He stepped down to the ground and skits the bow. Your cheery wits. Twilight grinned. Thank you, Commander. She went to reading Cadence. Oh, is it alright if Cadence comes? Sulu with good Cadence. Of course, Princess. The more the merrier. He mustered his hats. Anyone else tuning or this year three? Twilight looked about. With the excess of the fort, there was no one else about. Looks like it's just us. She floated her suitcase up and let it trail behind as she, Rainbow Dash, and Cadence boarded the shuttle. Inside, there were several chairs fastened to the deck. The pilot and co-pilot seats were right in front of a large viewport, along with several consoles and panels. Twilight walked up to one and climbed into it, the suitcase sliding under the chair itself. She looked around, spotted the safety harness swinging from the chair's frame, grabbed it with her magic. She looked around for some sort of lats or tab to secure it to, but nothing stood out to her. As she looked to Sulu enter his cell, sealed the door behind him. Commander, she must have the harness. This thing's broken, could... Sulu stepped around, grabbed the harness's buckles, and adjusted them for Twilight's body. Fastened to several discreet hard points on the chair. He stood back and looked it over. It takes some practice, he said. Anything else? Twilight shrank down slightly. He was ringing about to ask the snickering could be heard. I think I'm all set. Thank you. Rainbow Dash hopped up and landed in a chair next to Twilight's. She grabbed at the harness with her wing tips, bringing her about, and attempted to fasten herself in. The buckles, however, slipped out of her grasp. She growled as he reached for her harness again, only for it to once more slip out of her grasp. Buggy, fairy, horse apples! She might her twisting around her seat. The buckles slowly floated up and around. Blue magic fell at him. They clicked it to place and fastened her in. <laughs> Thanks, Cadence, she mumbled. Cadence looked over from her own chair. You're welcome, Rainbow Dash. Just watch your language, please. We are representing Eclesia, after all. Silly chuckled as he powered up the cell sentence. I've heard a lot worse from actual ambassadors and diplomats, your highness. 
Let's fight several sweats. Then lean forward, look down the view screen. Lift up the T minus 10 seconds. 5 seconds. And lift up. The shell lifts it off the ground, pirouette in midair, before shooting off into the sky. It went to a point to advance. We have a desk gas. Holy feather, we are moving! The sky outside the viewport quickly darkened, changing from bright blue to dark, then to the deepest black. The stars appeared, shining steadily in the sky. Sulu pulled down a slider to the astro gear, and we have lifted the atmosphere. He turned to look to his passengers. Go ahead and unstrip yourself, but please take care not to do anything rash. We are in space now, and it can be very dangerous. Hi, Sergeant Glowed. They slowly unclipped the harness that held her in the chair and slid down to the deck's plane. Why is there so gravity? She said, her eyes narrowing. Precious. I know some gravity manipulating spells, but this is much more stable. We're able to ask her to throw. <coughs> uh, Twilight, a little help, please! She must to her own harness. A smart cross Twilight's muzzle, but she used her magic to undo Rainbow Dash's harness. Just remember what Commander Sulu said. She flew up a jet to hold a dash. No falling around! I dug research on what the vacuum exposure could do to living tissue. It's not pretty. Rainbow Dash's head bottom down. In this case, fly, no worries. She waved a wing in front of her. Cross my heart, hope to fly, stick a cupcake in my eye. Sulu glanced back over her shoulder from the pilot seat. That sounds like it could get messy. Rainbow Dash barked a laugh. Ha! <laughs> Don't tell her the piggy pie! A smile faded as her gaze fell upon the main viewport. Her eyes widened. Is that? Sulu motioned to the co pilot's chair, currently unoccupied. Go by the head. I've looked down the controls from that side. Fable Dash barely paid Sulu any mind as he floated up to the viewport. Twilight Key is joining her. All three stared similar expressions of wonder as they gazed down the planet Equus. Large sections of the planet itself were obscured by clouds. But there were still large swaths of the continental continent visible. Jagged mounds cut through the land, slicing through patches of brown, green, and of yellow. Oceans ringed the land mass, disappearing around the horizon. Rainbow Dash looked around. The stars! They're not twinkling! Twice slowly nodded. The atmosphere distorts their light, producing that. What we're seeing now is pure starlight. It's so beautiful. Kansas's eyes narrowed. I... I can't believe how beautiful this is. She looked to Sulu. Commander, is this how it is for you? She pointed to shook her head. I mean, is it... Sulu looked at the viewport as he sat back in his chair. I understand your highness. No, the weather never really goes away from me. Sometimes it lurks below the surface, but it's always there. Remember that squinted. Hey, where's Ponyville? Cloudsdale or, or Canterlot? She looked at Twilight. Are we really that far up? A small smile crossed through his lips. We are indeed Rainbow Dash. It kind of puts things in perspective, doesn't it? He turned the dial on his console. No, this shuttle has warp capability. Short range, but it can hit warp too. He looked at the three, grinning. Would you like to take a short trip before going to the Enterprise? Rainbow Dash scoffs. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, really? She turned to Twilight Kings, of Proskara from her chest. Please, can we go? It would be so cool to fly faster than light. Twice head bobbed up and down. Oh, yes! She turned to her left to look directly at Sulu. Please, Commander, make it so. Ha! Sulu pressed a single button on the console, and it linked in close to the microphone. So compared to the Enterprise, Slick 10 is a place. I'll be taking the shuttle on a short trip outside the solar system to demonstrate what flight to my commander to pass the Marissa's voice came out of speaker ground, so what changed the story? Mm -hmm. Understood, Copernicus. Thank you, Flight. Sue glanced at the others. What's this? He said, hands dancing over the controls. The flight fell away to starboard, the shell turned to deep space. The star suddenly stretched out in their pistol long legs. But if we change the color from white to multicolored streaks, there was a flash of bright light, and the streaks changed to white, streaking by. All three points gasped. Frame of the ass suddenly let yourself over. Wait, I'm not feeling it. Kane's glanced at her, confused expression on her face. Not feeling what? Frame of the ass tapped the deck playing. I mean, the effects of it are seemingly faster going, you know? Acceleration? Twilight gasped. She's right. 
so it's a cadence. You know, when you fly fast, you feel G-forces pressing against you. The faster you go, the more extreme they are. So you glance to the ceiling. Let me see. Or two. That's eight times the speed of light. So we're going... Her ears start straight up and eyes widen. One million four hundred and eight thousand miles per second! Sulu nodded. That's right, Twilight. Our artificial gravity control allows us to counteract almost all the extreme T-forces. Sometimes there's a bit of lag, but by and large, it works. Kane slowly shook her head. There's so much we can learn from you. Sulu nodded. Yes. There's a lot of fed things you can learn from you, too. After about 20 minutes, Sulu cut the power of the warp drive. The streaks outside snapped back into steady, shining stars. And there we are, deep space. Barker and Lanter suddenly escaped Rainbow Dash. She brought her front hose to her muzzle as she allowed to continue. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm officially the fastest Pegasus ever! King Snicker. <laughs> well, technically, you're only riding in the cell of Rainbow Dash. Not even piloting it. Rainbow Dash waiting up waiting there. Still counts! She slowly turned to Sulu. Well, Commander, what? Sulu rolled his eyes and shook his head. No, Rainbow Dash. You can't fly your ship. Rainbow Dash is a tire body slumped. Her head drooped. Ears folded against her head, and wings reacted tightly against her body. Aww! She said, kicking slightly into deck plating. Sulu swiveled his chair around and slowly faced Rainbow Dash. Well, when we get to the Enterprise, would you like to try a simulator run? It won't be quite the same as the actual shuttle, but it's the next best thing. Rainbow Dash is here twist. Can you program a meteor shower for me to fly through? Sue is stored. <laughs> I think we can manage. He turned back to the control console. Note that. Let's turn to Super Red and see where we came from. He slid it down on the astrogator. The star field outside the viewport slid to the left, slowing and stopping. Sue was detected in several displays, then stood up, pointing to a star near the third viewpoint. And that. Is the ecosystem. Rainbow Dash leaned forward, front eyes narrowing as she looked at a small perfect light. It's so, so small, she finally said. Twilight looked around at various stars. If you hadn't told me which one was ours, I wouldn't have been able to tell which it was. She slowly held up a huff. All I know is there. Everyone. Everything is there. Kate straight to wing over Twilight. You okay? Twilight like the cadence. Yeah, thanks. Sulu leans back in his chair. Drawing his fingers on the console for a second before speaking. Every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on that most dust, suspended on a sunbeam. Twilight turned and saw around. What? She was straight enough, sorry. Sorry, princess. It's. It chilled out for a moment before continuing. In February of 1990, 279 years ago, an ancient Earth probe known as the Voyager 1 was instructed to take a picture of the Earth as it hurled out of the solar system. Voyager 1 was about 6 billion miles away at the time, so Earth was a small dot barely distinguishable from the rest of the image. It became known as the Pale Blue Dot Image. I quoted part of his speech delivered in 1994 about that photograph. Those words written by a man named Kyle Sagan. Here's to you, Sagan. Sully smiled, stared at the viewpoint, at the stars as a distant point. You could say he was a torchbearer, so he got placed in the stars. Yeah, oh, sigh, slumped a bit. Good, but I wouldn't have gotten to meet him. Twice brought for a well. Sue goes back at her. Yes, princess? Twice shook her head. Nothing, nothing. Just thinking out loud. She so nickered and pointed to Dawn Light representing her home. Time to go back? Sulu nodded. Over. Back to the equid system. He set the controls and engage. The stars outside once more into the cell as the hit warp two. Once more, the three points stared in rapt and fascination. I got to take more. I still got to take a look at the main engineering during tour. Twice said, mouth open. Sulu chuckled. <laughs> Ask Scotty nice. He might let you look over his technical manuals. So I said, sat over, wings extending slightly. Really, Commander? Technical manuals? People just slapped their face on the hoof. Oh boy, last twilight now. Kane's cleared her throat, gained twice attention. <clears throat> Remember, he said, nicely, Twilight. Be polite and understanding if he says so. 
Try to sit bopped up and down. Right, right. No pressing, kneeling, or begging. Even if those manuals would teach me all I need to know about building my own work drive! Twice my eye began twitching. Parts of her remains started springing up. Can you put a hoof on Twilight's shoulder? Twilight, breathe. Answer the nose, out through the mouth, remember? Salute to Twilight, kids. Are you alright, princess? Twilight's nostrils flared as she breathed in. Now pressing lightly as she breathed out. We still have a smoother rain back down. I'm alright, Commander. Thank you for asking. We'll have it again! Sue's gaze lingered on her for a moment before he turned back to his console. Good to hear, Princess. I got down the Astro Gear. Because we're coming out of what? No. The star field outside referred to normal. The planet Inqua centered in on its viewpoint. It gradually drifted towards the right. A small silver shape, somewhat indistinct, appeared. It rapidly grew in size as the Copernicus flew towards it. A dislike primary tull dominating. A cylinder-shaped engineering hull trailed back, a neck connecting the two. Twin nacelles jutted out from the engineering hull's aft. Red hemispheres at the floor that crackled with energy. It flew above the inquest. Its bright white hull, red and green running lights, a gold deflector disc all shining proudly. Proudly, proclaiming to all that saw her that this was a starship. Bum da 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 ba 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 da 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 da. You beauty. Rainbow Dash let out a small gas. Is that the Enterprise? Sue grinned, so enthusiastic, shining almost as brightly. Indeed, it is. NCC one seven zero one, Constitution class heavy cruiser. Not a finer ship in the Milky Way galaxy. Damn straight! Twilight's own eyes shone. Most beautiful thing I've ever seen, she whispered. Now, if this will Star Trek the motion picture, we could probably spend a minute looking it over and floating by and doing a whole bunch of special effects, but we don't have a lot of time, so moving on! The Enterprise kept growing as his cell flew towards it. Sliding up to the right, Sulu maneuvered to Concurcus to fly around the engineering hall. As they flew, clamshell doors to the after the Enterprise opened up, revealing a subtle blade. Sulu glanced up. All right, you three. Time to return your seats and step in. Safety regulations first. No one grumbled as they returned to their seats, Twilight using her magic to step them all in. The shell slowed down as they approached the shuttle bay, passing through the magnetic containment field to keep the atmosphere in. Inside, several more shells and vehicles could be seen, along with cargo containers, tool racks, and various other devices. The shuttle hovered over a secret plate in the deck before dropping and touching down. Sulu unbuckled from his chair, stood up, and turned to the ponies. Ladies, welcome to the Enterprise. Sorry for the lack of a welcoming community in the shuttle bay itself. Captain Kirk, Mr. Scott, and Dr. McCoy are right outside. Fly nodded. Safety first, right? Sulu unsealed the cell's hats, leading the three out and onto the deck itself. Twilight hesitated a moment before stepping out. She touched the deck playing and sucked in her breath. <sighs> I can almost feel the warp engines. She looked at Kane as the rainbow dance as they stepped down. Can you feel it? The power. Rainbow Dash rolled her eyes. Do you give me a moment alone with your cold friend? She says, snickering. So I pay her no mind as she follows Sulu to a door near the aft end of the shuttle bay. They walked through, finding Captain Kirk, Bones, and Scotty on the other side. All three men wore the dress uniforms. Kirk snapped at attention. Twice Sparkle, Princess Keenan's, Rainbow Dash, welcome to the Enterprise. Twice looked down grinned. Thank you, Captain. I get so excited to be here. I mean, I never thought my wildest dreams I'd ever do anything like this. She said to tickle her host. Can you feel it? Can you sense the work car? Sky rubbed his chin. Classic. I think you and I are going to get along just fine. He turned over and glanced over. Miss Sash, glad to see you again. Especially when I'm not seeing two of you. And Jazz took on pat her chest. Well, come on, Sky. Do you know what I mean? That's why I feel awesome. Twy floated her suitcase up and over to Kirk. Captain, here's what you requested. It took a bit of doing, especially flying Sunset and Trixie, but I managed to get two copies. Kirk undid the latches and opened the suitcase. He glanced in and nodded, shouting and snubbed. 
Thank you, Princess. I will return these to you before you leave the Enterprise. Kirk glanced over at Sulu. Mr. Sulu, excellent pilot job. He raised up a palm on the arm. You have a message from Starbase Yorktown. Afterwards, please go see Mr. Spock or his service assistants on his report. Sulu nodded, smiled falling away. Thank you, sir. Look down. Princess's mustache. With that, he walked off, disappearing into a turbo lift. Twilight watched as he walked off. Hope he's all right. She looked up at Kirk. What's Mr. Spock working on, Captain? Kirk started walking down the corridor, the rest falling by his side close behind. Mr. Spock and a select group of crew members are going through the episodes and movies, such that Trixie gave us to formulate a report and appropriate responses to the information. We probably can't act on everything, but there are things under our control that we can change for the better. His hell lay his hand up as he spoke, gesturing. King spoke up. So what's the first stop on the tour, Captain? Kirk glanced up as he turned a corner. First stop is right ahead, Princess. He walked up to a set of double doors at the end of the corridor. Welcome to Bay Engineering, Mr. Scott. Sky watched for a grain. Like you, Captain. The door slid open as he approached him. Inside was a cavernous two-story room. Consoles and banks lined the bulkheads with liars and stairwells at intricately space intervals. In the center was a large gray domed pedestal. Near the back, a large gray barrier dominated the bulkhead. Large yellow pipes, big enough for a pony to fly through, ran through the floor to the ceiling, each one pulsating slightly. Engineers were scattered about, doing various tasks or going from one workstation to the other. Twilight slowly walked forward, her head darted about. Oh, well. She stopped in front of the pedestal, way slowly extending. Is that what I think it is? Sky walked over to the pedestal and tapped the dome. I last it. This is the top of the matter antimatter reaction chamber. But no, streams of matter and antimatter hit a specifically shaped lithium crystal, producing energized plasma. He turned and pointed to the barrier. Those contours send the plasma to the nacelles, enabling us to bend or warp space. Here, there's his eyes fo lost focus slightly. Yeah, okay. Twilight of Twilight's chamber, horn goes slightly. So much power here, Mr. Scott. I can feel it. Hope you build something like this. Sky knelt down. I have technical manuals. If you'd like to look them over, they're a bit dry, but. The light around Twilight's horn increased. She hurried and up. Her head started up. She started hopping up and down in a circle. Yes, 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 Arc was silent, descended between those who were standing around her. Rainbow Dash and Kane succeeded a glance. Okay, you were her fault, sir. Rainbow Dash swiped away in a still hopping twilight. How do you call her down? Takina's grown. She walked over and placed herself in Twilight's path. Horn glowed and Twilight floated off on the ground. Okay, calm down, she announced. Calm down right now or straight to bed when we get back home, young lady. I mean it. Twilight kicked in the air for a few seconds before she ceased. Her <laughs> eyes ceased setting in. Her cheeks burned crimson. Her head hung low. I am. I'm sorry, everyone. No excuse for my behavior, there. Kirk shook his head and waved her off. It's no problem, your highness. I'm rather glad to see you so enthusiastic about learning. He looked at Bones. Isn't that right, Doctor? Bones died. Hey, Captain. Sound by and sound by. Don't see anything wrong with it. Sky showed the three around, pointing at the various console devices and what they did. So he probably just listened with a watch with rapt attention. Near the end, Rainbow Dash finally spoke. Okay, I'm not exactly the smartest Pegasus of Equestria. Coolest, but not the smartest. But even I get how how complex and dangerous this could be if you don't know what you're doing. Sky nodded to her, expressed serious. I have Rainbow Dash. Think of a note, does he not? Bring his hand around, mostly in the entirety of remaining engineering. Every person here is highly trained to do this. They have to be, otherwise... BOOM! He threw his hands in the air, and she's puffing out at the last word. Kirk spoke up. Indeed, Mr. Scott. He stepped back and lifted his head. He his voice rose. Indeed, I'd be willing to call the engineering team of the Enterprise the finest crew in Starfleet. Sky beamed. Like a captain. That means a lot. Kirk was the door leaning out. Well, ladies. Next on the tour, we have our science labs as well as sick bay, photon torpedo control. As they left, Kane sung back, sliding at the bones. Doctor. She said, keep her voice low. 
Would it be possible for you to give me an examination before I leave, please? She held up a wing. I'm not sick or carrying any diseases, at least not any I know of. Francis proud for her. Well, I see why not, Princess. Truth be told, I do want to do some more research on your anatomy. So, I'm wondering what your specific reasons for this is. King's Plink. Well, promise you won't tell anyone? Buzz nodded. Doctor Page to come to the Princess. Unless it's something that threatens the Empress. My lips are sealed. He is a loud sigh of relief. Thank you, Dr. McCoy. That means a lot to me. Bones waves her off. Please, Princess, just call her Bones. King's Nicker. <laughs> I'll leave you calling King's Bones. At least, when we're not a formal function. Bones chuckled. <laughs> well, I think you and I will get along just fine. The Princess Turbo Lift's door slid open. Kirk walked out, followed by Twilight, Rainbow Dash, and Keats. And here we have the bridge. Kirk said, Why don't you just hand around, accomplishing the entire area? This is the command center of the Enterprise. Orders are given, implemented, and carried out from here. You can consider this to be the brain of the Enterprise. The Twilight walked around the outer perimeter of the bridge. She stopped in front of the main key screen, currently selling equals from orbit. She stared up at it, now the hanging opened slightly and eyes wide. Kirk walked over and stood by Twilight's side. Put things in perspective, doesn't it? Twilight nodded. Commander Sulu was reciting something from a speech called the Pale Blue Dot. I don't think I'll ever get used to seeing my home from this angle or distance. Rainbow Dash trotted over the stage and looked over to catch his chair. Pavel, looking a bit more sober than last time, she said, winking. Have a check out my stuff on the home console. Yes, but it's not quite heavy as good to tank as before. Went to his left, the person occupying Navigator's chair. Ah, think of this. I'd like you to meet my friend Alex. Iris looked over, his bulbous orange skin head turning. Raised his arm, extended from his chest, and waited at Rainbow Das. And I am such a Star Trek fan, I know who that is. Pleased to meet you, Miss Dash. How do you like the tour so far? Maybe Dash returned away. Pretty cool! See, if you don't mind me asking, what planet are you from? Eric smiled. You know what I say? I don't mind at all. I'm from Idos. Okay, and the triangle of constellation. The most of the console in front of him was right hand. Care to take a look? Maybe Dash's way shot straight out. Do I ever? Excuse me, while. What did you see in Sarah the Prince? I assume this is your chair, Captain? Kirk nodded and walked over to Kansas' side. Correct, Princess. Wait his arm around, pointing at each station. From here, I can receive any and all pertinent information from the outer series stations. Engineer, gravity control, communications, compass, helmet navigation, and sights, among others. He patted the backrest. It's quite comfortable. Okay, Snicker. <laughs> it has to be. After a few minutes of asking questions and wandering about, the three ponies gathered together to catch his chair. Well, what would you like to see next? Flame of Dash held a four leg up and waited. Oh, oh, I'm gonna go try one of those cell simulators Captain Steele mentioned. Ty cleared his throat. <clears throat> I'd like to go out on one of those science labs you mentioned. I imagine what I could learn there. Flame of Dash rolled her eyes. Boring! Ty rolled her eyes. Well, you don't have to go. Do you want to go play in a cell simulator or something? He was ready to dance over the mouth. Keynes tried it over and slid the space between. Wayne spread out, pushing him both back slightly. Well, well, not here, you two. She looked at Kirk and Granny nervously. <laughs> My apologies, Captain. Kirk chuckled and waved her off. Thank you, but no need, Princess. He scratched the back of his neck. Remind me to tell you about the Dolmen of Elas sometime. Toy Kirk's throat. <clears throat> I do wish to apologize for my outburst there, Captain. It's still unseemly of me. She leaned forward and looked at Rainbow Dash. I'm sorry, Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash died. Stay here, Twilight. Sorry. Kirk spoke up. Well, while well, Rainbow Dash is using the cell simulators, Twilight, you can visit one of the science labs. I'm sure you will find them to be quite enjoyable. Twilight rubbed her chin. So, want to join me in the science lab, Keenan's? She cut your final host together. Then we can have a lot of fun. Rainbow Dash's story. <laughs> Come on, Twilight. We both know you would be hanging out with me. Dazzling me your showers. Kane's eyes shifted back and forth between them. Actually, I've got my own request. 
C flat is dead, muzzle tucking properly. Bones sat as off sick bay, recording with one hand and pat in the other. Slowed about his chair. Metal will like supple mail. I've been going over his scans for taking a celestial, Luna and Twilight Sparkle, anticipates that Princess King is showing up. He held the pad up. Eyes narrowly as he looked at the screen. I'm not entirely sure what to expect from her. My gut says it's nothing dangerous. Still, I can't be too careful. Just then, there's Christine Chapel walked in. Princess King is really slightly behind. Doctor, your appointment is here, Chapel said. She stepped aside. Now don't worry, dear. His bark is much worse than his bite. Bones rolled his eyes. Very fine, Christine. He stood up most of the door. I believe you have the reports for the upcoming crew physicals to get started on. Chapel nodded to him. Yes, Doctor. I'll get started on that. She said goodbye to Canis before turning and walking out, leaving the two alone. Bones grabbed the medical tricorder from his desk, as well as the pad before walking to the door. Now, if you'll follow me, I have a bob bio bed all set up for us. He went out of his office into the main area of sick bay, over to a bed protruding from the bulkhead. He patted the back, kissing. Now, could you please describe any symptoms you may or may not have? Any problems or things you may have noticed? Kane slowed up and onto a bio bed. As he did, the body function panel was above activated. Well, my stomach's been pretty queasy. I've had odd cravings. See that outside? I have a feeling I know what's going on. Admittedly, I couldn't flee until my husband's shining armor and I got back to the Crystal Empire. Or privacy that way. But with the Enterprise, I figured word won't get out. Phone struggled. <laughs> Can't blame you on that. He paused. What? Crystal Empire? Keys nodded. Yes, it's an ace in that princess off. She cut her head to the side. You didn't know? Phones let out sigh. I'm a doctor, Kate. It's not an ambassador. Less necessary, I leave that stuff to Jim's body. He lost track her sister wanted and waited over Kate's. Kent his eyes on a tricor screen, proud for right. Well, well, well. He got dealt great. Kate, I got good news. You're not sick. Kate's let out breath, head drooping slightly. Oh, thank goodness. Their head rose. Wait, I'm not sick, so that means. Phone's grin. You are pregnant. He looked up and pointed to the body panel. Sit with sweets, if my readings are accurate. And using the information your government's already provided about your basic biology. Looked back at Kansas and Grant fell away. Kids, you alright? Kansas flapped her wings as she hopped off the bed back to the deck. Her face peeled slightly. I'm. I'm fine, Pals. Thank you. She can't from side to side. Oh. Bones dropped to one knee. Steady, steady. I could call Twilight and Rainbow Dash here if you like. Kane stopped, turned, and held the hoof up. No, Doctor. Please don't call them unless necessary. I don't want either to get too excited, especially that Twilight. I prefer to tell them when we're back in Equestria and not on a starship in deep space. Twilight could get a little excitable. Bones grimace. Her powers could get out of control. Kane lays her head back and forth. She's, she's a lot better than she used to be, Doctor. A lot better. But to be honest, yes, sometimes. Bones threw his fingers across his mouth. My lips are sealed. He stood up. I'll be honest, kids. I haven't had much time to specifically study out core anatomy. I could give you general readings, but overall, it'd be better for your own doctors to give you physical. If you like, I could give you a print out of the readings I've taken of the array for you to use. Keith smiled. Thank you, Bones. See you to the bio bed. Would you like to do a full physical on me? Dad, to your nose about core anatomy. There's a slight pause before my bones laugh. <laughs> well, that's the first. Keith's expressed confusion. He shrugged. Most of the time, I have to drag people in sick bay for their physical kids. He patted the bio bed once more. It's throwing a wince. Twilight, Keith, and Rainbow Dash walked back to the shuttle bay. Kirk, Sula leading them. Rainbow Dash's wings were extended. They winked about as he walked and talk. So, it turns out flying a shell is a lot harder than it looks. Especially when you're trying to dodge rocks flying at you from all directions. Kane's and Twilight exchanged a look. They figured, Kane said, smiling. Twilight nodded. Trying to protect and dodge everything coming from every direction would be almost impossible to calculate. A brown fur on the horn lit up, unless... Kane's placed a hoof on Twilight's shoulder. 
Maybe when we get back to Equestria, you can figure it out. Twice weren't done, I guess. It's glad I said King is on a corner ride. So, how sick bay? Are you alright? King said bobbed back and forth. I'm perfectly alright, and I promise to tell you both. But only when we get back to Equestria. She crossed herself. Cross my heart, hold the fly, stick a cupcake in my eye. She chanted, and did her soul bite to place the puff over her closed eye. The crew stopped in front of the cell's main entrance. Kirk turned and stepped over to the ponies. And this concludes the tour. I hope you three found it enlightening and educational. He held a suitcase and brought it aboard. Twa, everything is all set. Twice horn closed, he gently floated away from Kirk to her flank. Thank you, Captain. You have no idea how this is going to be for Sunset and Trixie. Kirk half grinned. I have a bit of an idea. He spun about. Mr. Sue, Copernicus is all set for the flight back home. Safe journey, Commander. Sue nodded. Thank you, sir. You know, two passengers. Ready? Twilight looked over his shoulder, down the corridor. Spence has been to spend the next decade or so inside the science lab. Explore every nook and cranny of the ship. It's time to go back, Mr. Sulu. She looked at Kirk, smiling slightly. Until next time, Captain? Kirk nodded. Until next time, Princess. You're what? Thanks to Full Sap, Sun Tzu, Fizzy Orange, and Talon and Thorne for Terrible Pro 3. Thanks to Full Sap for specific help with Carl Sagan. We also have a actual picture and video of the Kelpay Field Blue Dot. I think it says the shuttle was definitely traveling near stellar distances in metamorphosis. Yes, it would have a warp drive. I could have sworn there was an episode where they actually mentioned that a shuttle has a small scale warp drive inside. How do you mean engineering being in the secondary hall comes from this cutaway poster I have hanging in my room? Makes the most sense to me. I keep it there. I want that I want that cutaway. Won't lie. My favorite starship in all science fiction is definitely the Constitution class starship. Either original or refit. Um I would either have to go with a Constitution class starship myself. A fire class fire jet for for me would be an X Wing. Or of course, the Millennium Falcon. See you guys next week.